There was quite some progress last time when I built here the stages 55 to 80, although it was not frustration free. And I was so annoyed by certain quality aspects that I organized myself this pile of mods by Mike Lane in order to upgrade my fan home kit. Mike Lane offers various modifications of which none is mandatory. I decided that I would like the magnetic hubcaps. And as cute as they are, the seatbelt buckles have to go. I will also remove the Pontiac logo from the gear shifter knob and the dashboard not only gets new monitors but also the ventilation grills for the ultimate finishing touch. The stock door panels were total rubbish but the mod will make them a lot prettier. For the front nose I'll be installing the grills as well and finally the interior gets a facelift using extensive carpentry. Additional mods are available by Mike Lane but I didn't consider any of them important enough for me so I deliberately left them out. I would also like to emphasize once more that Fanhome is only sponsoring the stock model of kit but not these modifications. This is money that came from my own pocket. And the pockets had to be very deep as these mods cost easily over £300. But in the end it was worth the invest for me as you will learn throughout this video. Let's start with the door panels which were one of the biggest disappointments so far for me. In addition to the new carpets for the door panel, the kit also includes the sails for the speaker covers which will only be needed in a future step. Also included are decals with the Pontiac logo as well as replacement felt gliders to protect the windows from scratches. Now, as I assembled everything in my last mega build video, I have now to tear it apart again in order to install all these modifications. Of course, that's quite some extra work, but I decidedly want to be able to show the comparison between the stock and the modified model. And here you get to see already the first difference in hue between Fanhome's carpeting on the top and Mike Lane's on the bottom. And even when just holding it temporarily into place, I can see already how it's going to look. But first, I have to repaint the trim, essentially swapping the color, making one tan and the other one silver, before I can install the new carpets. And as mentioned, this set includes new sliding felts. This is definitely better than the vinyl stickers to protect the windows from getting scratched. What do you think? Doesn't it look a lot better with the new decals attached? Let's continue with the conversion kit for the hubcaps. The screws are to be removed and some circular silver colored rondelles take their place to create the illusion of mounting bolts. To mount the hubcaps, some small neodymium magnets are attached to the center of the hubcaps. That's the only thing that I have to complain about because somehow the adhesive film does not stick very well. As a result, the magnets came loose after a short while causing the hubcaps to plunge down. I fixed this minor problem with a drop of contact glue. This way, the magnets will finally hold in place, creating this clean look on the hubcaps. Grills or no grills? It all depends on the season and the actual episode and the actual cars used. No question, a matter of taste and I didn't install the front bumper grills on my real life size replica of kit as I'm going season 3 there. But this model car is a season 1 and 2 kit and the grills really look great. Though in order for these to be installed I have to temporarily remove the previously installed fog lights. Also, there's this piece here, which is supposed to be a motion detection sensor. This was never seen on screen, but belonged only to the replica, which served as a template for this miniature car. So I can definitely leave it away. Now, as I want to complete the front bumper today, I'll briefly sneak in Fan Home's Construction Phase 81. This way, I can install the other three fog lights as well. Of course, it would have been too much to ask Fanhome for all six headlights to be included in the very first stage when we started building the front nose in the first place. 
At least, all the headlights are in place now, along with the grills. Along with this build stage, Fan Home delivered the blackout covers and another fail of the day. While I can easily mount it to the left hand side right away, I first have to drill the holes on the right hand side. Sometimes, I'm really questioning myself about quality control. For the finishing touch of the dashboard, these grills for the ventilation system really make a nice addition. They're made from metal and will stick to the dashboard using an adhesive film. It's a small mod for a great effect after all. As for the interior floor panels, you get the impression of carpentry because of the imprinted surface structure. At first, I didn't mean to get the carpets, but it looked so nice that I had to get them. I start with the trunk piece, onto which I affixate the various copper pieces. And again, even with holding it against temporarily at first, it seems to be a perfect fit. The carpets are quite thick, which clearly prevents them from warping. You may be put off by this large piece, like never ever are you going to put that in place perfectly straight. But believe me, it's fabricated very exactly and it just fits into place absolutely perfectly. It's really amazing what difference just these three pieces of carpet already do to the overall appearance. So I also got the carpets for the passenger floor, which I have to fully take apart as well. Here, there's significantly more carpet pieces. But don't worry, also these are very thick and solid, not warping at all and staying in shape during the application. I'm just remembering how awful it was to apply the original door panels, where I had to do it in several tries, peeling and pulling it into place. And here, I simply take somewhat 20 pieces of carpet and apply them as if it were the most natural thing in the world. And it just fits together absolutely perfectly. I'm blown away. And Mike even thought about the kick panels and included two carpet pieces for those as well. Although these are going to be largely hidden away afterwards, I opted to also get the heel and toe pads, as I had these on my life-size replica as well. So why should they be missing from the miniature model? And it looks totally awesome. Finally, it's about time to put the back seat back into place. This time, however, I deliberately leave the seatbelt buckles away. Then I also have to repaint a few parts. Here is the cover of the glove compartment and also the upper part of the gear knob where there was simply no Pontiac logo to be seen. These will become all solid black. The side trim panels of the P and E seats also get a new coat of paint. Admittedly, I made a mistake with the color so I'll have to do them again. I'll also be closing these sideways mounting holes on the center console because here as well I will not reinstall these seat belt buckles. And finally I'll be applying the floor mats. There's a pair each for the back and the front seats. These are simply glued into place and you're done. As mentioned the driver side floor mat hides the heel pad a bit but that's how it's supposed to be. And finally, I can reinstall the PMD seats to complement the interior once again. Admittedly, the center console isn't the correct one yet, nor is the radio and that gas pedal is wrong as well. Unfortunately, my claim does not currently offer any mods for these. But there are other modders who offer these parts, but they were unavailable at the time. So I'll have to come back and revisit this area again at the later stage. And sadly, this also applies to the dashboard. Even though Mike Lane has stated that he will bring another dashboard modification along, this hasn't materialized yet. At least, I can replace the monitors already. Fanhome only provided us with the static prints, whereas Mike's mod does include a new monitor bezel and a small OLED display featuring real animations. The kit comes with a set of new cables because it brings you the option of powering the entire model using an external USB-C connected power supply. The European Union Commission, which proclaims USB-C as a standard, would be really happy to hear about this. And here too, I have to disassemble everything again. 
I will also sort out all the parts that are no longer needed as they are effectively replaced by the kit. And let's be honest, the OLED display will definitely look a lot better than these half-heartedly implemented still screens. And say what you want, but the new monitor frame looks so much better. Although some of the old components have been removed, this panel here will be retained. It fits neatly into the replacement part, to which also the LEDs of the standard kit are mounted to. There are also two new cables that go to the controller in the trunk area, one for the power supply and the other for the signaling line. The instructions say that you should plug in the USB cable now. But somehow, installation is easier if the bulky cable is out of the way. I plug the cable here again, but it's just totally inconvenient for the next step. Because by the time this panel follows, the cable will simply be in the way again, and you would have to pull, hold, push, and all of this at the same time. So I unplug it again, then the cover comes in, and only then the cable follows. That made it actually easier for me for the assembly. And finally, it's time again for the fumbly cables on the controller. It is important that the cable L is no longer connected to the socket L, but to the socket H. This is explicitly mentioned in Mike Lane's instructions in perspective to a future dashboard modification. For the power supply you now have the choice of disconnecting the battery compartment and power the model exclusively via USB-C. To do this, you will plug the grey-black cable directly into the 5 volts in socket. Or alternatively, as shown here, plug this Y cable into the second power connection socket and run the grey and black cable there, leaving the battery compartment connected to the 5 volt in socket. This gives you the option of powering the model either via the battery or via the USB-C. It is important however that only one of the two can be used at a time. So either put batteries in and no power supply to USB-C or vice versa. And in the latter case, the batteries should be removed from the compartment for safety reasons. Last but not least, the trunk piece goes back in before I lay the USB-C connector into place on the underside. I've been hesitant about buying mods for a long time. What I've shown you today costs almost 400 euros. And, like I said, I have paid it myself. No sponsorship, no discounts. But when I look at this quality, and when I look at the results, there's no doubt that it's worth every penny. And the animated screens look so much better. Great work from Mike Lane. Still, you have to digest this. Anyone buying from Fanhome will spend over 1500 euros just on the base model. And because of various things are just crap, you then resort to third-party modders to straighten things out. Of course, you don't have to install any mods. Most of what I have shown you today is not a must-have. Actually, I just wanted to get to grills, the animated screens and especially the door panels. The latter in particular were so terrible that I couldn't leave it like that. Ultimately, seeing the pictures of the interior carpeting convinced me in getting those too. There are many other mods like the brake disc and calipers, hose clamps or the towing bar. These were things that weren't too important to me, so I decidedly left them out. On the other hand, there are other parties offering mods like an authentic Season 1, Season 2 Santa console, the matching radio and even a scanner with the all lights on effect. And I still hope that Mike Lane will bring his second dashboard modification at some point, hopefully also including a fix for this one here, the ugly voice box. So my conclusion, it's a clear recommendation to purchase from Mike Lane if you want to improve your fan home kit for the ultimate finishing touch. Everything is possible, nothing is necessary and if you short on cash get the door panels for £25 and the cable extensions for another £10. Everything else doesn't matter but the door panels alone make it so much better. And while I didn't show the cable extensions today you'll see them in an upcoming video and how it will spare you some 
headaches when dealing with too short cables. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.